Hey everyone, have you ever wondered why deep neural networks work so well? I'm sure you must have come across examples such as these where you feed in an image as an input and it outputs captions such as man in black shirt is playing a guitar. Or you must have come across this announcement from Google I.O. Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. This was a deep network talking to a human. And finally, this example. President Trump is a total and complete dipshit. This video was a deep fake. Like you, I find these examples mind-blowing too. And as I started getting more into deep neural networks and understand what's happening under the hood, I imagined I'll get a lot of literature explaining why deep neural networks are so effective. But boy, I was wrong. Actually, nobody understands why deep neural networks work so well at the examples uh, that relate to human world, such as images, text, video, etc. Deep learning is really a triumph in tinkering. The state of deep learning today is like state of engines during industrial revolution. People made them work. They had applications, variety of industries, and they changed the way work was done. But theory of engines was not developed until much later. Similarly, in deep networks, uh, uh, they, they work, but people don't understand why they work so effectively. Having said that, there are some tantalizing hints which I'm, to, I'm going to go through in this video. And the first thing to understand about deep networks is when we say they model real world phenomena, what they are doing essentially is transforming one type or set of data into another type or set of data. For example, we saw in the first example, you input an image and it was outputting a text and uh, other neural networks are doing these transformations. And mathematically, a transformation is nothing but uh, a function which takes an input and gives an output. And the universal approximation theorem of a neural network uh, says that these neural networks can approximate any function. And the video that i have showing here on this slide uh, is from a book called Neural Networks and Deep Learning. I'll put the link in the description, but you can see that if you modify very various parameters, which are called weights and biases in a neural network, it can change the shape uh, that, of that network and approximate any function that you throw in. Uh, but one way to approximate a function is to simply also store the values. So in that sense, a database is a trivial function approximator. You feed in a lot of training data, X and Y, and it can simply store what X uh, what y corresponds to what x and uh, so th that genius uh, of neural networks isn't really that they can model function because even a database can do but the genius of neural networks is in modeling and predicting the data that they've never seen before so for example this is a photo of orbit my cat uh, which a neural network classifies as cat uh, even if that network has never seen this photo before if you input this in a database, uh, obviously it will not return anything because database will not have uh, an image of my cat. It will simply have images of cat that were stored when you were storing those images in it. And the real mystery then is that how does this generalization happen? Why does a neural network uh, which is trained on many, many cat images is able to take an image of my cat that it has never seen before and still identify it as a cat. So this generalization depends on what our real world is all about. And uh, so it's just not a combination of this mathematical wizardry of neural networks that's universal function approximation, but it's also because our world is structured in a way that enables neural networks to succeed uh, in such a manner. And you'll just see why. Uh, one of the hints, one of the biggest hints uh, about understanding deep neural networks is to see that they work much, much better than shallow neural networks. It's generally known in the, in the academia and industry that to get better performance, you throw in more layers in a neural network. And state of the art in neural networks 
really does have many layers uh, 50 and I've even seen models that have 150 layers in the neural network and I think this depth of neural networks is source of their effectiveness uh, this is the reason why 50 layer network works better than 3 layer network and 150 layer network works better than uh, 50 layer network if we were to go by the fact that neural networks can approximate any universal function then even a three layer network can approximate any function out there but why is that then the more layers you stack uh, the better their performance gets this is what's explored in these two papers uh, whose link i'll put uh, in the description of this video the first one is deep learning works in practice but does it work in theory and the second one is why does deep and cheap learning work so well both of these papers explore an idea this idea that the reason deep networks work so well is because our world is deep too and by deep um, what is meant here is that our the phenomena that we observe be it say living systems life species or even material objects such as a glass or further uh, on on top of all these things maybe cultural phenomena such as internet on memes and so on and so forth all these are a result of phenomena happening in layers underneath it so for example what happens in a culture is a result of mind and what happens is mind is a result of uh, evolution and evolution is really a result of what happened in universe as earth got formed and chemicals got together to kickstart this so there is this deepness in explanations and deepness in data that we see in a real world and uh, because of this deepness uh, of phenomena the data we ultimately feed into neural networks isn't random in the mathematical sense in fact the data that we feed into neural networks be it a video or be it even a time series data if you're modeling a financial stock market performance is emergent from some lower level phenomena for example if you are inputting uh, stock market data it is the way it is because how human behave how markets behave and humans behave because of how evolution was there and how they competed amongst other animals so there is this hierarchy of phenomena which results in the data we ultimately feed in a neural network to understand this imagine there is a thousand pixel by thousand pixels image uh, which is black and white and every pixel can take either black or white so now there are two rest to power thousand into thousand such images because each pixel can either be black or white and there are uh, say thousand into thousand pixels interesting thing about this is that the number of images for even such a simple scenario two raised to the power million is much much greater than number of atoms in observable universe and um, uh, because neural networks work so effectively on the data we find uh, this means that uh, natural world data that we find isn't mathematically random because if we were classifying these random images into uh, categories there's just not enough uh, atoms to store that uh, data or even enough atoms to do that computation so this really implies that whatever we observe around us isn't mathematically random take the image of orbit again and you see that uh, in this photo different pixels are constrained by what cat really is so cat photo is constrained by whiskers ears nose fur and different things that make up a cat and parts of this cat photo thus cannot vary independently you can't have something on top left be very very different from what is in top right this is also sort of a hypothesis and an observation that natural world data and images are part of some higher dimensional manifold uh, which take a very regular structure and you'll understand this in a minute when we see how do we visualize uh, neural network performance but back to the cat example so you see that cat photo is comprised of cat and cat is comprised of cat parts whiskers first and all those things are clustered uh, on a head you don't find eyes uh, in in on, on legs and so on and so forth and head is on a body which is around 40 to 50 centimeters and body is solid not liquid and gas because you don't have um, life which is say gaseous or liquid and you see that uh, this hierarchy of how data was generated in the real world resembles hierarchy of a deep neural network and it's no coincidence actually um, 
these whatever hints we have so far they suggest that different data at different levels corresponds to what layers of a deep neural network ends up modeling so layer 5 will end up modeling cat uh, and start recognizing cat only because layer 2 recognizes a body and layer 3 recognizes a head and so on and so forth um, so different layers of a neural network map different layers uh, levels of reality and this was visualized uh, beautifully in this paper called Visualizing and Understanding Convolutional Networks. What they found out was uh, for a deep network that was trained on millions of images across uh, two recognized thousands of categories, they found that in initial layers, the neurons were detecting very simple shapes such as edges or gradients, say in layer one, and layer two combined those simple uh, detections and started detecting more complex things such as circles or triangles or even further patterns like wave pattern, sand pattern and in layer 3 you combine and start recognizing even more complex sort of shapes and patterns so there's a honeycomb pattern there's a wheel pattern and there were neurons that started recognizing human faces also which is a combination of say a circle and a triangle and an edge detector and so on so this really means that uh, what when you're training a deep network what you're doing is you're letting different layers of that network uh, approximate what is happening in different layers of reality so a hum if, if you are training a deep network that's recognizing a human face you are letting its different layers recognize circles eyes and so on and so forth and uh, it's so, so so it's no surprise really then a deep network is able to explain and model the data we find in the real universe because the data we find in real universe is also because of uh, what we see on different uh, levels of phenomena so now uh, coming back to what i was suggesting earlier what we understand that different layers model different uh, uh, different layers of a neural network model different uh, explanations on different levels uh, of reality but as a whole what neural network is doing is it's casting some sort of a fishing net to constrain uh, the data that it sees uh, for example if you have a neural network that takes three inputs x y and z and uh, you try to model the relationship between these three and suppose the hidden relationship between these three is that uh, they are points from surface of a sphere then you'll see that uh, slowly and gradually as you train and feed more data uh, the whole network starts approximating uh, a fishing net that resembles like surface of a sphere so imagine that instead of these three inputs x y and z you had that thousand by thousand pixels image uh, which means a million dimensional space uh, now you'll find that there is a sub-region in that million dimensional space that corresponds to cat images and all cat images sort of end up there because those cat images are uh, comprised of lower level phenomena like nose and ears and so on and so forth and different just like x, y and z in this image is constrained by an equation that specifies surface of a sphere in a similar manner pixels of a cat image are constrained by this fact that they are uh, a cat photo and they cannot vary independently so neural network as a whole is taking a very complex sort of a surface in a uh, higher dimensional space but that is a very very small region as compared to what's mathematically possible so cat image is a very small portion of uh, two raised to power million possible different images which is black and white pixelated images so deep neural networks are in a sense doing what scientists do. Scientists map uh, different levels of reality uh, uh, by different fields. Physicists feed on mathematicians work, chemists on physicists, and there's biologists, psychologists, and sociologists. And you can imagine these uh, scientists uh, as really different layers of a neural network, which is trying to approximate and model the world that we see out there. Now here's an idea that uh, I find very very interesting and intriguing. Uh, supposedly whatever hints we have so far are true and deep neural networks are performing by mapping and modeling hierarchies found in real world onto different layers. 
can we discover new laws of science by reverse engineering such networks for example if you take a deep network that's trained on uh, say driving data can you interrogate it reverse engineer it to find something new about human behavior for example if it finds out that uh, on sunny days drivers are more casual and pedestrians are more casual can it make a discovery that sun causes happiness or you take uh, a classifier uh, that distinguishes between cats and dog images and find out something new about any animal evolution that biologists don't yet know about and can you take a neural network trained on ga galaxy classification and really find out properties of da dark matter something that physicists are working really hard to find out uh, uh, today i know this sounds crazy and i'd love to hear from you in comments uh, Uh, but my thesis is really if we can create automated scientists who discover new scientific laws simply by reverse engineering deep neural networks imagine how simple it would be to publish new papers discover new laws simply by collecting tons and tons of data and putting it through a deep neural network training algorithm and then finding out uh, and discovering what different layers of that network is is doing and that's how we could start getting new insights so that's it i hope you enjoyed the video uh, i am new at creating video so if you like this video please uh, comment like and subscribe to my channel if you are interested in videos of this kind my previous video was about uh, these mathematical equations called logistic maps and i tried to link it to what these mathematical equations tell us about free will so go check it out and um, i'm very active on twitter Uh, find me and follow me my handle is @parashopra and thank you